What's up, guys? I'm Rich. And I'm Tiffany. And we are Tripping Through Adventures. We are, if you're new to the channel, we're a white trash couple from Speak Florida. For yourself on that. Who went to the UK and made it their whole personality. Not white trash or from Florida. It's okay to be white trash. It really is. It's okay to be white trash <laughs> because you know what white trash does? White trash <laughs> explores new places sometimes. Mm -hmm. White trash may want to see beautiful things in other places, maybe, maybe Scotland per se. And you know what? You know what else white trash might do? What's that? They might rekindle uh, siblings who's been parted for a long time. <laughs> no? Okay, guys, we got a cool video for you guys today. I don't know why I did that, like that typical, like, we got an awesome video, like and subscribe. I don't know why I did that. We're watching a video today by Lifestyle How. We actually watched another video uh, of his for uh, Northern England, I believe. So we like the way he goes about doing things. He's got a nice way of talking. So we're gonna try to watch his video here today. That whole part about long siblings like one of our local towns here which we think is probably one of the most beautiful towns on the planet at least in the state of florida which is mount dora florida is sister cities to get ready for me to destroy this name fours scotland f-o-r-r-e-s fours for i'm gonna you guys are gonna make fun mm -hmm. of me so bad i'm hoping it's fours mm -hmm. and there's a sign in mount dora that says welcome to mount dora we are sister cities to fours so please tell me in scotland you have a sign that says welcome to fours we're sister cities with mount dora i hope they do yeah if not this video is gonna be extremely awkward yeah and if you guys have that picture, email me that picture. I want to see that picture and I'm going to be so depressed if not. But let's get to the video and see how beautiful we've seen other places. It was absolutely gorgeous throughout mm -hmm. the UK. And now we're to Scotland. And there's a few things that I want to see in Scotland that I, I just I just want to see, like not on here, just visually. I, I don't need to see them on here. I, I know they exist. That's why I want to see them. But this we're going to get some fresh ideas so let's start the video but let's take a look at 10 beautiful places to visit in scotland and if you do like the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up number one the isle of mull located in the so picturesque inner hebrides in scotland the isle of mull is the complete package for tourists who love adventure and nature. You can visit the charming town of Tobermory with its coloured houses and independent businesses and explore miles of stunning coastline. But no matter what the Isle of Mull weather is like, you can experience the perfect island escape. Wow. To the west of Mull there are some exciting discoveries to be made, such as the tiny enchanting Isle of Iona. So like, there's like different isles, like the Isle of Skye, the Isle of Iona, and I just heard it, learned mm -hmm. a disorder. I don't know if I said it right or not. <laughs> I don't know if he said it right, but like, it seems like Scotland, I know the mainland, like through Edinburgh and um, all that's all mainland, but it seems like the more north you go, it breaks up into isles. Is it literally like islands or does isle mean something else? Yeah, what does that mean? Because we say island. So what does aisle mean? Like the only time we talk about aisles is in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And it's so different. Yeah, white trash. <laughs> Which is a peaceful haven where you can discover one of Scotland's geological wonders on a boat trip to Staffa. Or visit the wonderful beach in Calgary on the Isle of Mull, which has one of the best beaches in Scotland. If it's nature that you want. I want to point something out about that. And whoever said to us, stop stopping the video and talking, it says reaction. That's what we're doing. We always post a link to the full video below and a link to their page to which we hope you go and subscribe to because this is really good content in order for us to be looking at. But what I was looking at right here was this looks a lot like the beach in Wales. Yeah. Like a lot. Not like the... Um, 
not like visually it kind of looks different but the way like see how it's like shaped like yeah, like the odd shape to. Are the beaches man made? Like, do you guys. The same yeah, it's in the water. Yeah, it looks man made. Is that like a man made beach? Do they like haul the sand in themselves? I don't know, because it just looks strikingly similar to the other beaches in shape of how it just like dead line of grass. Mm -hmm. It's like perfectly formed. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. like cut out. Uh, it decides it might be man made. If it's nature that you want and stunning beaches, then the That's Isle of cool. Mull wow. should be on your list. <laughs> Number two, Cairngorm National Park. Everything looks like one of Scotland's to two national parks. <laughs> Cairngorm National Park sits within the country's northeast region. You know that water is ice cold. It's easily yeah, it's one of the be. best things to do in the Scottish Highlands. The park is a true mountain wilderness, home to five out of the six Scotland's highest peaks and four out of the ten of the highest in Britain. It also boasts some of the most beautiful lochs and rivers, native forests, farmland and moorland, as well as being a stronghold for Scotland's wildlife. There are miles upon miles of trails and a wonderful choice of a destination to be on this list. Oh, that is amazing. It's like this, when you watch this stuff, it's like... You just get a feeling. Yeah, like, I just want to go there so bad. Uh, it's like a whole vibe. <laughs> like, we're dead middle of summer, but you know fall's got to be so... Like, in Florida, we have no fall. We no. don't know what fall is. I I thought fall was just, like, when you fell. <laughs> I actually never really experienced fall as a kid. I We experienced stuff through decorations. So, you know, they say autumn. They don't really say fall. I don't care what they say. I'm just telling you. I don't care. <laughs> no. And fall, autumn, um, when you, uh, like Tiffany, she, like, she's from New Jersey. So she had a fall every year. Yeah. Like, I loved it. That's my favorite season. So when I watch these videos, I get like a feeling yeah. and it just, I want to go there so bad and just have a nice coat on. Yeah. Like it, I want a whole outfit, a look, like it's a whole think like coffee just, looks like it'll taste better there yeah, yeah. Right. walking around with some i don't know just a cool fall autumn outfit and just i feel like the air probably is so crisp <laughs> yeah and you know it's nice and cool not in the mountains look intimidating no humidity that looks really it's just beautiful number three bow fiddle rock located just off the coast at port Noki. Bowfiddle Rock is an incredible natural formation, formed by the sheer force of waves alone. Wow. Over time, the pressure of the waves in the North Sea have sculpted yeah. this popular landmark into its unique bow-shaped formation, which makes for a great photo opportunity. So this is a beautiful place to go on holiday for those of you who are keen explorers, kayakers, or even hikers. I suggest you spend the night the in Cullen and then plan to capture this scene at sunset and you will feel as if it's your own amphitheater. Wow. Number four, Shetland Islands. Ooh, like the ponies. <laughs> Look at those houses. The Shetland Islands are irresistible a blend of Scottish and Nordic cultures. It's set just outside the northernmost tip of the British Isles, hidden in the North Sea. Just the Shetland Archipelago is Britain's most distant. You guys probably don't know this, but I can tell you by looking at the pictures, a wizard lives there. Definitely. There's no way a wizard doesn't live there. This video is making me so excited. What is it? This video is making me so excited. No, it, I, I was saying that well, I did a live stream today covering because we had this whole tropical storm thing going on and I wanted you guys to kind of see it. And this is what I was talking about. Like, I'm counting the days until I board a plane and go back here. Like, I'm, well, it's probably weeks and months, but you know what I mean. Like, I'm super excited just to get back here to see all this. And it's most starkly stunning clutch of islands, famous for its unspoiled beaches diverse wildlife, and of course, the archaeological sites. So why would you visit? Well, there are very few places in the UK 
that feel as immediately Viking as Shetland. With a Norse-inspired place names give you that immediate sense of a long Scandinavian influence. The landscape provides pure geological and natural drama. Yeah, it's so weird. it's a place for real adventure. Up until like a week ago or two weeks ago, I watched a video. I didn't know Shetland Ponies Number five, Castle was Storm. from Shetland. I knew Shetland Ponies, but I didn't know Shetland was a place. Two of the most fascinating and romantic. Because there's nothing more romantic than stalkers. <laughs> situated off the beautiful west coast of Scotland. This island's castle's picturesque placement, standing tall, is set against a dramatic backdrop of mountains, and it's made it into something of a cliché image of the Highlands. To be frankly honest, Castle Stalker is entirely authentic and it's easily one of the best preserved medieval tower houses in Scotland. I wonder if you go in there. The What's view the alone house? is just another reason why you would need to go to these must-see places funny. in the Scottish Highlands. You guys always say, like, we don't know stuff. We don't know stuff. Like, you're like, that's not a castle. That's a this. We know castle and fort. That's it. And then I thought I was figuring it out, and then you're like... That's a tower house. Well, what's a tower house? <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Obviously, I want to go to it if you're allowed to. And so, you know, this is our research. We just do it together. With you guys. <laughs> it's more fun that way. Yeah. I want to go find the ghosts in the tower house. If any of you have ever been to this place, let us know. Yes. And if you did, can you go in there? Yeah. I get to make magic at Disney, but it's always been a dream of mine to get a higher education. Number six, Ben Nevis and Fort William. Standing at over 1,344 meters, Ben Nevis is the highest peak in the United Kingdom and is the mountain that all visiting climbers want to conquer. Now, many base themselves at the nearby town Fort William to give them a few days to explore the imposing peak and its tranquil neighbor, Glen Nevis. So if you're considering tackling the climb, just make sure you go fully prepared. Number seven, the Curang. Now this is the kind of place that leaves you breathless. Yeah, and not just because so you, you have to trek uphill. What? The I craggy landscape like... looks like something. I would go by it like a a dress and like run around there. <laughs> like, like something you'd see out of an old princess movie. Like that's what it looks like. <laughs> True. <laughs> you don't want to do that. No, I don't want to run around there in a dress. Well, I do. <laughs> it just looks like, like princesses live there. Yeah. <laughs> Running around in dresses or behind me and off the days are long gone. Yeah. Think from a magical realm. Never again. It's a great walk for hikers as it passes through some of the most spectacular landscapes in Scotland. As part of the Trotternish Ridge, it has been formed by a massive mountains. landslip, which is cr I know you guys get tired of Americans thinking everything's mythical over there, but just... Everything's mythical over there. Created high cliffs, hidden plateaus, and pinnacles of rock. Now the Kurang is situated in the north of Sky and the walk is in a loop, returning you back to the same point. And it's on this list because there are even more places to see in this region. Now I got a question for you. How many hikes have you been on in your life? None. <laughs> Pretty much everything on this video is hiking. Do you see yourself hiking? Because the one place that showed that it was like absolutely gorgeous to hike, you envisioned a dress in stiletto hills. No, you gotta be like, like a fairy tale princess, like a, do you, do you, a long, super long flowing dress. 
So yeah. it rains most of the and time. And like a princess dress, and you got to be running barefoot with your hair blowing. It in the rains way. most of the time in this country. Like how long? That's like a five-hour hike. So like thirty minutes in, when all that wears off, what are you gonna do? Then I'm going to open the backpack that you're carrying or the suitcase you're carrying. I'm going to put on my hiking boots and my warm clothes and my super cool vest and my hat. I'm going to wear that the rest of the time. I'm just 30 pounds worth of extra stuff to go on that hike. Yes. I have a bad back. <laughs> well, maybe we can hire someone. <laughs> Number eight. The Old Man of Stor. The Old Man of Stor is situated in the north of the Isle of Skye, famous for its magnificent scenery and this its views. don't look real. Mm -mm. Now, the Old Man of Stor is a large standing formation of rock, which is part of the Trottenish Ridge. Look at that. Created by a massive ancient landslide. Yeah, I'm so drawn to the black. Like I mentioned, for the like just looks so. Leaving one of the nice. most photographed landscapes in the world. I can see why it don't look good. It's definitely look changed real. beyond belief since my first visit as a kid. The path is still steep, the views are still stunning, and the sense of achievement on reaching the base of the store is still exhilarating. It that takes roughly about an hour and so 20 much, minutes without any stops, <laughs> and the path going and coming back is still the same. Number 9. Kilchun Castle Now, although this castle isn't perfectly intact, Kilchun Castle still packs a very photogenic punch. The ancient ruined building sits majestically on a rocky peninsula at the northeastern tip of Loch Orr in the Argyll and Butte region. I love it. <laughs> really cool. So it was built in the mid 1400s as the base of the mighty Campbells of Glenochy for 150 years and it wasn't abandoned until the 1700s but today it sits perfectly framed by its truly stunning surroundings and yes it is very well worth the visit especially if you're touring around the beautiful highlands you can the isle, isle of sky is like on my bucket list i want to spend a lot of time there like I know there's like it's just I want to drive there I want to because it just it's just so amazing like the landscape and just the things there it's just like I, I want to go to Edinburgh I want to spend time there but I want to spend a lot of time here because there's just so much I want to do all of them. yeah there's so much to do how does the um how does the castles like end up abandoned like how does, why? I, I was There's so many actually. abandoned castles everywhere. So like I'm developed, I'm, I developed like a theory. I think this might be the thing, right? So like it's kind of dilapidated, right? Mm -hmm. And there was resources and manpower. And I think with a lot of these castles, it probably, I don't know if the tower, watchtower one, whatever. Mm -hmm. But this one looks like it's very dilapidated and old. So I'm assuming what happened was once it started dilapidating, Mm -hmm. It already served its use, and they did not either have the manpower or the resources, or it wasn't worth the manpower and resources to rebuild. Yeah. Maybe whatever they built that for, because, I mean, the UK in general is just layers and layers and layers of confrontation and fighting and stuff. That was 14th century. Yeah. That might have been to fight or to hold for the Norse, yeah, the sure. Vikings coming in, and then, you know. In the 16, 1700s, that was no longer a thing, so it was no longer needed, so mm -hmm. nobody cared. And back then, they wasn't on to preserving history like we are now. It was just it was a castle or whatever, just let it go. Actually, from Glasgow all the way to Loch Or. So don't worry if you're not traveling there by car.
Number 10, Wallace Monument. Why did it sound so scary? Now, this may not be on that's every why. Scots oh, list, that's why. but I still think it's an outstanding landmark that and one so of cool. Sterling's most striking visits. That's crazy looking. It commemorates the life of Sir William Wallace, the patriot and martyr who came to be saluted as Scotland's national hero. Now, inside the monument, you'll find yourself transported back to the 13th century as you discover the story of the warrior who led the Scottish army to victory at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. So point to note, there is a shuttle bus that you can take up the hill if you don't fancy the walk. Seeing as there are over 200 steps broken up by exhibition floors. But I have to tell you, the views are stunning. We're gonna go up that mm -hmm. part two. <laughs> Scotland is definitely on the list for when we return because there's just so many yeah. beautiful things to see. Since we've returned from England, Tiffany has pushed to go to Scotland next. She wants to go. She wants to see Edinburgh. She wants to see, I want to see the Isle of Skye. So this is definitely going to be something that we, because I mean, look at it. How, how could you not want yeah. to go see these stuff? The thing is, is we don't really hike. No. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, as, as far as Scotland, I know it's colder. I know it's like a lot, but vivid, like visually, it's got to be one of the prettiest places on earth. I love the colors. <laughs> I bring this up because I'm on like this real Tolkien rant right now. Uh, me, and, me and Richard are halfway through, or not halfway, we're over halfway through uh, The Hobbit, mm -hmm. into which we'll probably start on another British uh, author because I don't know if he's ready for uh, Lord of the Rings. It matures a lot. Uh, but like visualizing and seeing these places and like, when we went to Oxford and seen like the rivers and the streams and stuff, it, it, it really helps when you're reading those books. Like, because when I'm seeing them walk around mountains and stuff like that, I'm visualizing these Scottish highlands. I'm visualizing in wells, and, you know, and it really helps because, you know, it, it's just such a beautiful backdrop for imagination. And I think mm -hmm. that's the thing that, I think that's why you get these good writers and these good, you know, these stories because yeah, such inspiration all around them. Yeah. And as for America, mm -hmm. the majority of our, uh, the majority of our fairy tales come from England. You know, I don't know anybody who doesn't, who doesn't know King Arthur, mm -hmm. you know, one of the most popular movies is not a fairy tale was Braveheart here in America with, you know, Mel Gibson as William Wallace. They didn't paint their faces blue. That was a pick thing for the pick tribe. And they just thought they'd add that in extra. And apparently William Wallace, so I watched this. We mentioned it in another video and somebody was like, hey, you need to watch this whole video on how that movie was just completely wrong. Mm -hmm. And I watched it and it was like a whole rabbit hole to go down and you're like, what else in my life is a lie? I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that William Wallace wasn't a freedom fighter for Scotland. We're slowly talking about the movie of how it kind of messed it up and how it was a little bit more political than how it led to be. And how like they kind of make it, made them look a little dirtier and grimier as fighters. And they was, they, they had a lot, a little bit more self-respect than that. But it was showing like William Wallace covered in mud and stuff like that and just really dirty. And they're like, no, they probably would have been not dressed nice, but they would have been a little bit more put together than when the, sh the movies play it off, mm -hmm. you know? You gotta check out Lifestyle How. He's got a lot of good videos. Yeah. And even if you're from the UK, look it through his videos. We're from America and we find videos of even Florida, cool places in Florida that we never know about, yeah. you know? And so check out his videos. He's, he's, he's great at what he does. Uh, and if any of you've ever been to any of these places, Tell us your experience and your thoughts on it. And um, if there's any places around Scotland that you've been to that you think is super cool, that let us know. We should check out, yeah. Because we're definitely gonna try to go to Scotland 
We're not going to try to go to Scotland. We're going to go to Scotland, but we're going to try to do as many places as you guys say. Yeah. If you are from Flores, 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 I, I don't know how you pronounce it. Somebody will correct me down in the comments, as you <laughs> always do. But uh, I will post a link as top comment of our videos of Mount Dora. That way, you guys can kind of see what your long lost sibling is like and see maybe if you guys come to Florida, because it's only about 30, 45 minutes outside of Orlando, a real mm -hmm. short drive. You can come and check out your sister city. Before we go, thank you to all our new members because people keep becoming members and that is awesome. Yes. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you want to become a member, there's a button down here and you'll get a cool little badge that says you are a member and then you get priority on comments and you get priority and we will write you back, but sometimes it hides the comments. So we have to wait till we find the comment, but we always write our members back because you guys are posting thousands of comments. Mm -hmm. I want to write you all back, but we, that's a lot of comments. Yes. So remember, Scotland, 10 most beautiful places. Link to that video below. Become a member. I'm Rich. And I'm Tiffany. And that was 10 most beautiful places to visit in Scotland by Lifestyle Help. Bye-bye.